lovely to see the commitment and lovely to see everybody here this morning. It's it's a wonderful opportunity for me on Palm Sunday to, to address you and share a little bit of the background to what happened that, that special day. The slides that I have today, when I was standing at the back there, uh, Um, and after one service, one of the, the deacons or one of the society stewards said to him, you know, Pastor, he said, when you pray, and I look at the congregation, I see images above people's heads. This one is busy taking the, the roast out of the oven. The other one is busy washing his car. The other one is doing homework or doing an assignment. He said, keep your prayers short. But what I like to do is I'd like us to all pray together. And I think that way, not only do we keep our focus together, but we have an opportunity of sharing the prayer together. Let us all say, Heavenly Father, as we make the journey into the Holy Week, we pause and ponder the word of God. Your Son and your Saviour, paving the way for our lives to be set free through Jesus' death on the cross. Blessed are you, Holy God, for in Jesus Christ you rode into the lives and the reigns of our hearts. You came to rule in your lives, not only as a king, but also as a humble servant. You know the challenge we face. Many things often distract us. It is easy to turn from you and become engulfed in the issues of the day. Point us back to the one who comes in your name, the one who opens the gates of righteousness and answers us when we call. Open our eyes that we may see the coming of all the power and glory for the might of man. I think it gives us an opportunity to focus on exactly 
what we get up for today, and that it is to welcome our Lord back into our lives. I'd like to hand over now to do the notices. Good morning to everyone and welcome to our service and a very special welcome to Selwyn. We are so happy that he has joined us on this pretty cool wet morning. So I'd like to draw your attention to the notices this morning. Let me move this off. Um, I think we need to thank Linda who regularly sends out the, the notices every Friday. She emails them and I hope you get them. If you don't, you need to let the office know. Um, and she sends them out with a, ten, you know, a lot of information for you. So please just note the meetings that are coming up for the leaders, the exec and the CQM. They are mentioned in there, but I think the most important notices would be the Holy Week services starting with today and ending next week, Sunday. And by then, all our ministers will be exhausted. <laughs> so please do join us for those. Most of them will be online and here in the church. Um, and happy birthday to everyone enjoying a birthday this week. Then I just want to make one other announcement this morning. At the end of this year, Reverend Storia Satish will be retiring from active ministry and enjoying a well-deserved, new, more peaceful adventure. I'm sure she's counting the days. Two years before a minister leaves a society, the process to find a new presbyter starts. Last year, the society stewards spent a lot of time in prayer and set up a profile for a minister. They would like to see SMC or lead SMC into the future. This profile was emailed to different people, many people, and hoping that they would forward it to anyone they thought might be interested. We received a reply from a minister who fitted the profile perfectly. Due to this minister only becoming an ordinant this year, we had to wait for 2022 to make any further inquiries. At the start of this year, our, society, our circuit steward, Orateng Mutswai, sent a letter of inquiry, and this was met with a positive response. The leaders met with the minister and subsequently a letter of invitation was sent. Reverend Yaku Haber has accepted our invitation to minister at SMC and this was approved by the circuit courtly meeting as well. We have the full support of our superintendent, Reverend Kediborni and Tambo, and our bishop, Reverend Sidwal Mahoto. Um, and we felt, oh, and it just needs to be ratified by synod and conference still. But we felt it was important to inform you as the congregants so that you know where the process is and what our plans are. We pray that God will bless Sinival Methodist Church with a smooth transition and that his love and word will continue to be preached throughout our community and country. And you're welcome to speak to me if you have any other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As we, as we do the offering, I have a, a wonderful old hymn that we'd like to, you can just remain in your seats, dead open, I think you come from the back and deposit your offering here and go back to your seat. And while you're doing that, we'll sing this wonderful old hymn, I will sing the wondrous story. So please, uh, as you come through, you can sing, as you go past, put, deposit your, your offering and then, <coughs> Then we'll stand for our first hymn. Thank you. <clears throat>
Who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. <clears throat> he humbled himself to become obedient to death even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name, that the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, under the earth, and every tongue shall acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father God. I have a peace prayer which I would like us all to read together. In these troubled times, I think it's important for us to remember there are people who would love to be sitting in a church like we have here today, but for a number of reasons are not able to be here, not able to be where they'd like to be. So let's say this peace prayer together. Heavenly Father, your Son taught us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. At this hour, we fervently pray that your Holy Spirit may inspire men and women all over the world to become peacemakers. May they seek reconciliation and dialogue and put an end to violence, confrontation, and killing. May they restore tranquility, human rights, democracy principles, religious liberty to wherever they are. Almighty Father, we ask that you may comfort the suffering, heal the wounded, and accept the souls of the departed into your heavenly kingdom. And we pray that we may always live our lives as instruments of your peace. Amen. I have a little video which I'd like you just to sit back, close your eyes if you like, think about the events of the last week in your lives, just reflect on the words and the images if you'd like to watch them, and think about the sacrifice that Jesus made for you.
and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shore. Our gospel reading comes from Luke 19 and reading from verse 28. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethany, all the hill and Bethany, all the hill called Mount of olives. He went and he took two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which one has not been ridden. United, untie it, he said, and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it as he had been told. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As they went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the roads go down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully singing to praise God in the loud voices 
for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I said, our story today is all about Palm Sunday. As we study the life of Jesus, as we study the life of Christ, we discover that those who wrote the stories of Jesus were saying that the most important part of his life was, dis was disclosed in that last week, the week we now call Holy Week or Passion Week. So Palm Sunday is at best a day of temporary triumph and at worst, it's an illustration of the fickleness, the fickle nature of people. But setting that all aside, Palm Sunday and Easter is about praising and rejoicing. We Christians have a special reason to rejoice at Easter time. For while Christmas heralds the birth of the Messiah, our Savior, and it fires an opening shot in the battle of evil. Easter is the victory celebration and makes us ask why there is no more praise in our hearts and in our churches. Praise for the victory passed on to us over sin, death, and the devil. When I look around at services that I, that I do from time to time, I ask myself, why are there not more amens? Why are there not more hallelujahs during the worship each Sunday? But I go one step further and I ask myself, why don't we hear these hallelujahs and amens in our daily lives as well? Picture the scene. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He pauses at Bethany. And through his symbolic gestures, the crowd of disciples believe and expect that he's going to ride into Jerusalem as the long-awaited Messiah. But here is what he does. In the fulfillment of the prophecy, he sends for a donkey, and then he rides down the Mount of Olives, into Jerusalem while the disciples shout praises and they lay, their, they lay their coats in the path of this donkey as we read in Zechariah 9. And it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. He is just having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. And so, and so the excited followers shout hosannas. They cut down beautiful branches and they throw them for the donkey to walk over. They create a royal path for this king. Now, looking at this outpouring of praise, let's look into our own lives, our own actions over the past week, over the past month, over the past year. 
Now, the most important thing I think as I read through this is that while praise is customary within the court's temple, the show of praise displayed outside of the temple is not something of that's seen every day. You see, they're coming down this Mount of Olives, coming into the town by one of the busiest roads. It's a kind of time and place where you don't expect to hear singing and you don't expect to hear words of praise and hallelujah being shouted out. It's a time when people are a little bit more somber. They're actually coloring outside of the lines, as it were. It's important to understand the background to what was happening that day. I kind of realize my own poverty of praise. Praise that I give to the Lord. When I go outside of my own personal boundaries. When I go into the grocery store, the supermarket, or have my car repaired. And in the conversation that I have with somebody there, maybe it's the, li the lady behind the till or the mechanic under the car. They openly start joyfully singing and praising God. And what he has done for them. It's then, it's then that I realize that most of us, most of us, including myself, do not praise God as we should. Neither within or outside the walls of our church. Sunday seems to be a day in our lives that's separate. And surely the blessings that Jesus gives us extends beyond the church. It extends beyond the Sunday. It comes into each of our individual lives. Last Sunday, as an example, I asked for a testimony from anybody in the congregation who would like to feel they'd like to share a story how God had touched them in the last week. It was absolutely quiet. Nobody stood up. Nobody raised a hand. And I had to conclude from that that maybe the Lord hadn't touched anybody. And I think it's, it's true to say that we, we are all truly blessed by the Lord. His, ex, his blessings go beyond the church. Like Luke said, the whole multitude lifted up their voices in praise. Friends, if you could see what I sometimes see on a Sunday, on a Sunday morning, you would think it's quite amazing. People don't open their mouths to sing. Now, I know it's a little difficult with our masks, but we need to lift our voices. We need to lift our hearts in praise to the Lord for what he's done. Many years ago, I used to I used to do a service at the Brits Hospital for the AIDS patients there every, every day. And I used to say to the people, as they were sitting here now, I would say to them, look at the person to your left and look at to the person to your right. And Jesus died for you. Would you die for the person sitting next to you? That's the commitment he made for you. That's important to release. And surely that's worthy of lifting our hearts in praise and thanksgiving to him. And this is the time we should be doing it. We are all his children. He loves each and every one of us. Oh, I know. I know. Like my wife, Juanita, says, I can't sing. She cannot hold a tune. 
the Lord is asking us. He doesn't expect us to, to sing wonderfully well. He's asking us that we should lift our voices to him in praise and join the others around you in praise and worship. We're not all beautiful singers, but he does expect us all to make a joyful noise. when the lady in the supermarket hand us, hands us our parcels praise the Lord to her say thank you you see this praise from the multitude of disciples is one thing that sets them apart from the crowd they were committed to Christ while this praise of the Lord was unanimous amongst the disciples it was a selective praise. It was only the followers of Christ that were doing it. They were the ones putting the, the palm leaves down and their, and their jackets down in the path. The Pharisees in the crowd didn't join in at all. They had sour faces trying to find something to criticize. Now, God doesn't expect the Pharisees and the unbelievers to break out in praise. But he does expect his children, you and I, to do so. In our lives, not just on a Sunday, not just at certain times of the year, every single day, 365 days a year, he expects us to praise him. It says, they rejoiced and praised God, saying, Blessed be the king that comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. You see, it wasn't sad music. It was joyful music. It was music that they were, they were joyful about. Non-believers see the life of Christ or the life of Christians as being sad and deprived. And really, they have themselves to blame because the choice is theirs. The choice is ours. And so, while some folks fail to praise the Lord, When they come into the church door, they, they seem to go through a metamorphosis. They go through a change. And they, they start praising the Lord. But those same people outside of the church don't seem to carry that joyful joyfulness in their heart, that love in their heart. Beyond the church door. We are children of God. We expect us to be children of, of God, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Let us pray, like the disciples did that day, have a foundation that is deeper than the fortunes of the moment. Don't allow the moment to dictate your attitude. Be joyful all the time. Let us say that though the foundations of our lives might be shaken, I come to the and I come into the Lord's house exhausted from plodding through the swamp of temptation and sin. My heart is still filled and lifted up in love and praise for the Lord. You see, our Messiah uh, gives us hope. that even though this hope might be difficult from time to time in your lives it is a wonderful reason to lift up our hearts in praise to him and so we shall still be praising the Lord but not for during the troubled times let us be let us adopt an attitude of love for our Lord 
every day of our lives. You see, there was still the Roman occupation. There were still the tax collectors. There were still tragedies facing the disciples. But they lifted their hearts up in praise to their Lord because they knew, they knew he was the Son of God. And they believed in Jesus as their Messiah. They knew that if they followed him, all their sins would be forgiven. The gospel points us to the fact that this praise of the multitude as Jesus entered Jerusalem was praise, praising him during a time that he was sorrowful. Remember, he knew what was happening ahead of him. The disciples didn't quite grasp that and didn't know. At that point, Jesus was fully human because he began to cry. The multitude had the opportunity to see him cry. Their conquering hero was crying. So why was he crying? The sight of Jerusalem from the top of Mount Olive is a magnificent sight. But in its glory, although the sun was gleaming off the golden dome of the temple, Jesus weeps as he beholds the multitude who are spiritually blind to the visitation of God. They didn't realize what they were seeing at that moment. Here is God in their midst, and they still rejected him. And will be rejecting him in two or three days' time. And they would crucify him. And they think they were doing God's will. And he weeps over the lost souls, the defeated lives. Jesus' tears come from the sadness. Of knowing that people's rejection of God and his ministry would lead to Jerusalem's utter destruction. Which we'll read about later. Forty years later, Jerusalem was totally destroyed. Jesus knew that. It was the year that the Roman army led by the future emperor Titus, completely destroyed Jerusalem. And the siege of the city was something that they could never once again overcome. Take time this week, this Passion Week, this Holy Week. Set time aside. Think about and pray about the things that stand between you and Jesus. And ask him to draw you closer to him. Respond to his love. Take hold of his hand and walk with him through this week of passion. The invitation is for you. So now, during this Lenten period, promise me that you won't let this opportunity pass you by. Draw close to him. Now, see one other thing that was happening on that very same day as Jesus rode down on the, the, the back of that donkey. At that very same day, there was another procession taking place. Roman historians record that the governor, Pontius Pilate, led a procession of Roman cavalry and centurions into the city. The two things happened at the same time. When you think of the pomp and the ceremony that followed Pontius Pilate's brigade as they were, came as they came marching into Jerusalem. And there was our, our Messiah riding on the back of a donkey with people shouting Hosanna. 
in closing, I have, I have to ask you one question. If you'd been in Jerusalem on that day, and you'd seen both these processions coming into Jerusalem and passing by there, maybe you were standing there. Which one would you have followed? Pontius Pilate or Jesus? You see, these are the choices that we all face every day. We choose the power over love. We choose the way things have always been done over the way God intends them to be done. Two processions, two theologies, two choices. Which one? Which one would you choose? What kind of king do you serve? A materialistic king of this world or our sovereign Lord? Lord. Amen. I have a, a short prayer which I'd like us all to, to say as we as we close the service. Almighty Father, thank you that your ways are far greater than our ways. Your thoughts are deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you have a plan to redeem us. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that your face is towards the righteous and you hear our prayers. Our prayers that come from our hearts. Help us to stay strong and true to you, Lord. Help us not to follow the voice of the crowds, but to draw close to you. To hear your whispers and to seek you alone. We praise you, Father. We bless, we bless you, Lord. Thank you that you reign supreme in our lives. And we are more than conquerors through the gift of Christ Jesus. We pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us stand as we sing our song and let's lift our voices up to our Lord and show him how much we love him. Please stand as we, we say and we sing, Here is love.
Let us join our spiritual hands as we share the grace with each other. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you all for coming. God bless you this week. And I pray that the Lord may be with you.